Reality check, reality check, reality check. Check, 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 check. Today we want to talk about some people who contribute so much to Jamaicans. And a lot of them now are caught between a rock and a hard place. Knowing that a lot of them leave the shore of Jamaica for a better life. A lot of them find themselves out there working in humane and deplorable conditions. to fulfill their Jamaican dreams. Knowing that they leave Jamaica sure for a better life. They did not um, abandon a Jamaica. So therefore, in the near future, they know that they will be returning home. A lot of them retired, some are on the verge to retire. They work their hearts off out there. I repeat, they work their hearts off out there. A lot of them purchase homes, buy properties, and start business in Jamaica. Knowing that further on in the future, they will make in that transition back from wherever they are in the, on the face of this earth. back to Jamaica, the land that they love. But all the dreams all the things that they work for and all the things that they accomplish It's now seen like it's in vain. And the reason why I say that, they are now sitting in limbo. Just like I'm sitting down here now. Forward, backward. Forward, backward. They don't know what to do. A lot of them migrate to Jamaica and have to flee back. Why? The crime situation in Jamaica doesn't guarantee them that they won't be the next victim of crime and violence. The Crime Minister of Jamaica is not putting nothing in place regarding the crime and violence. The only time you hear the Prime Minister come out on top of his loans is when he about to implement the law to oppress the poor of Jamaica. A 
The law is not going to target the taxi man because they want to pull up anywhere they feel like. They don't want to use the park. Or the bikers. All of a sudden, they become a nuisance to the Jamaican people. Knowing that a few years ago it was these same bikers vroom, 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 out there an unjuelness motorcade it was those same bikers you know but this is what holiness good at He use you and then he refuse you and then he implement laws to punish you. But where, where is the law for crime and violence? These people who work hard all their life contribute so much to the Jamaican economy. The diaspora is a big part of Jamaican economy. Money remittance that they send back to Jamaica. Buying properties, building houses, starting business. And all they asked for was whenever they retired. And want to return back to their land. They want to go home to rejuvenate. A lot of these people develop arthritis, joint pain, chronic pain along the way. Doing what they know best work and work hard so they can return to the shore of Jamaica we can go to the beach in the early morning and we can swim walk out on the property that I bought pick a jelly and drink Pick a fresh mango, eat it there. Walk down there, pick a fresh lemon or lime. Squeeze into a glass of water. And have a fresh glass of lemonade. Sitting down on their porch or on their patio. Rocking away. Listening to the birds, the sound of the oceans, the plane that flew by, and the ship that sailed along on the ocean. Laugh and play with their grandkids and enjoy life to the fullest. That's all they hawks for. They pay their dues. They migrate for a better life. They did not abandon Jamaica. Because they know in the future they would return. And that's why they work hard. Buy properties. Build houses. Start businesses to employ Jamaicans. And this is all you can offer them. Crime and violence. Mr. Crime Minister, where is the respect for these loyal people of Jamaica who has contributed so much to the Jamaican people? Even now, they are the ones 
who are contributing to these charities, who are helping the less fortunate and vulnerable of Jamaica. And all they ask for is a safe Jamaica to return to so we can fulfill our Jamaican dreams. We can live the life that we dream to live. We can walk to the seaside and we can buy fresh fish. My neighbor is killing a pig and I can get my fresh cut. I can go to the market and buy my fresh vegetables knowing that I'm not eating chemical or absorbing antibiotic. Is that too much? That's all they ask for. Some assurance that they can live in Jamaica peacefully happy, happily. You're not asking for much. But if it's the, the dictatorship style that you have, Mr. Crime Minister, whenever somebody says something about you, you send your police force to go and humiliate that person, to embarrass them, to come in front of the camera and apologize. That to show how little of a man you be. You are so tiny, Mr. Crime Minister. That you sit behind that bully, bully pulpit of the Prime Minister of Jamaica and you use it to bully and dictatorship style over the poor and the less fortunate of Jamaica. If you want to see the Prime Minister of Jamaica rile up, just wait and feel there's a law that's supposed to be implement on the poor. No, treat me like that. And there's a law and order in this country. It's only one sovereign country, one sovereign state. But when he's talking to the sons of the son of the queen. This is the prime minister tone. You, you, you know, we, we come up far away and um, you know the Jamaican people um, love to seek sovereignty. It's a baby. It's a baby. But when you're talking to the Jamaican people, under this dictatorship style. You are so bold to implement rules on the poor taxi man. Marshal Henry from Clarendon, the little bus conductor that was wearing a mask and you charge him 250000 for a breach the disaster risk management act out of the private out of the office of the Prime Minister of Jamaica. Now we all know that conductors are some of the people that are living below the poverty wage in Jamaica. And you see it fit in yourself to charge a person like that $250,000 to put that young man in his debt for the rest of his life. That's why I say, this man is so tiny. He hide behind that desk of the Prime Minister and he use it as his bully pulpit. He have no spine to stand up to no world leader. 
He's one of the weakest leaders Jamaica has ever seen in the history. And to put crime, get crime under control for these people who leave Jamaica 20, 30, 40, 45, 50, 60 years and want to return. To live their peaceful life. That they work so hard for. And you cannot give them a slightest hopes. That anytime soon. You can guarantee. That the crime will curb. And Jamaica will return to once where it was. And you people can come in Rome to enjoy the land of food and water. What I'm saying today to the diaspora abroad. Are very educated people, intellectual, in high places all over the globe. Because remember that, remember that, you know, there's a brain drain that taking place in Jamaica from way back. The brightest of the shore of Jamaica migrate all over the globe. To build the globe. So it's telling me that you are out there. You are out there. So all I'm saying. Is for you people to form a group. Come up with an oversight committee. That can hold all the government of Jamaica accountable. United we stand, but divided we fall. The diaspora need to come together in one force. Are you a private investigator? Have your own social media platform to highlight the wrongs and the crimi criminality of politicians? Who big and boldly feel like they can take stock pay taxpayers' money and do whatever they feel like with it. The ones that are bringing in the guns into Jamaica. The ones that are shipping in the cocaine into Jamaica. They need to all accountable. But we can't. We can't wait and see VM and TVJ and all those so-called news media in Jamaica to do it because they are bought and in the Prime Minister's packet. So it's you, the diaspora, have to make the changes because the people in Jamaica can't because he have them under this dictatorship style. So the people of Jamaica are intimidated and scared of this man because of his scare tactics that he applies on them. But it must be changes. It cannot continue like this. If we allow this man to get another term, this man will turn Jamaica into turmoil. Under his presence in Jamaica, take a, a nosedive. Jamaica are at its worst under his administration. Jamaica become the crime capital of the world under his administration. This man is running Jamaica over a cliff. But at the end of the day, you can't put rules and laws in place 
to govern the crime. Seriously. So the people who spent 30 and 40 and 50 and 60 years out here contribute so much to Jamaica and want to return back no home to live happily to enjoy what they work for to enjoy their homes, their property their homes now that have been overgrown it's like a forest some of their homes take over by cobwebs and dust insects Their homes now live abandoned. All they're asking for is a crime free Jamaica that you and the Minister of National Security have a duty to do. But you are not going to do it. So it's up to the people in the diaspora to come up with ways and means, strategically, farmer oversight, pay private investigators to invest these politicians. The diaspora will pay for it so long as, the, so long as they know it is not going into the hands of criminal politicians. They will pay for it. They go away, they work hard, they pay their dues. They help to build Jamaica. And all they hawks in for is a crime free Jamaica so that they can come home. Rejuvenate. Walk the beach. Swim when they feel to swim. Go in their backyard, chop a jelly coconut, chop a piece of cane, and if they have the teeth to chew it, they chew it. That's all they're asking for, Mr. Crime Minister. What are you going to do for the diaspora who contribute so much to Jamaica? They're a big part of the Jamaican economy with their remittance that they send back to Jamaica on a yearly basis. Where is the respect? Where is the decency? As a human being. Where is it? The saw they are asking from you. Mr. Prime Minister, give them some assurance. That you're going to get this crime thing under control. Give them a slight hope, man. You don't have to give them nothing huge and humongous. Just give them a slight hope. Implement some rules. Put some things in place. Make them see that things are actually happening. People are spending the time for the crime. That's all they ask for, Mr. Crime Minister. When will you step up and serve the Jamaican people who put their trust in you, elect you to govern and to serve on their behalf? Where are you, Mr. Prime Minister, and crime? You are hiding. You are hiding. The people are asking for assurance. They want to come home. They want to come home. They want to come home. Stay tuned, you know, <laughs> to the revolutionist and aromatic realistic TV, <laughs> where I bring you content with substance and clarity. Until then, much love. Peace. I'm out. Jamaican people abroad and the diaspora are now in limbo. <laughs>